Hey everyone and welcome. Today we're jumping into one of the most incredible stories in molecular biology, DNA repair. Now, if you're gearing up for an exam like the CSIR net, this is absolutely essential stuff. We're going to break down the cell's amazing toolkit for protecting our genetic code. You know, it's easy to think of DNA as this stable, unchanging blueprint, but the reality is it's under a constant, relentless assault every single day. We're talking damage from things like UV rays from the sun and even from the inside, from simple chemical mistakes that happen all the time in ourselves. So with all this chaos, how on earth does our genetic information stay intact? Well, the answer is just incredible. It's a whole suite of sophisticated molecular machines whose only job is to patrol our DNA, find the errors, and fix them on the spot. All right, so here's the game plan for today. First, we'll talk about why this is all so critical. Then, we're going to get into the nitty-gritty of three major repair pathways. Base excision repair, nucleotide excision repair, and the all-important mismatch repair. Then, to wrap it all up, we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison to make sure it all sticks. Okay, first things first. Let's really understand the stakes here. Why is the cell so completely obsessed with keeping its DNA perfect? This right here is the whole reason. A tiny little error in your DNA doesn't stay tiny. It gets massively amplified. Just think about it. That one faulty gene gets copied into hundreds of messenger RNA molecules, and each one of those can be used to build thousands of faulty proteins. See the problem? Fixing an error in the DNA is like patching the hole in a boat. It stops the problem right at the source. So to fight all these different kinds of damage, the cell is smart. It doesn't have a one-size-fits-all solution. Nope. It's got a highly specialized toolkit with different tools for different jobs. Each one is elegant and incredibly specific. Today, we're zeroing in on three of the big ones. We've got base excision repair, or BER. That's for the small stuff, the single base mistakes. Then there's nucleotide excision repair, or NER, which gets called in for bigger problems that actually bend the DNA out of shape. And finally, we'll cover mismatch repair, or MMR, which is like the cell's proofreader after DNA has been copied. All right, let's grab the first tool from the kit, base excision repair. The best way to think about BER is like a molecular scalpel. It's all about making tiny, super precise cuts to fix one single wrong letter in the DNA code. So what kind of damage are we talking about? BER kicks in for these small chemical changes to bases that don't really mess up the overall shape of the double helix. The textbook example is when a cytosine base spontaneously turns into uracil. Now you know uracil belongs in RNA, right? Seeing it in DNA is a major red flag for the cell. It's gotta go and it's gotta go now. The process itself is this beautiful four-step dance of enzymes. First, a special enzyme called a DNA glycosylase scans the DNA, finds that one uracil, and just plucks it right out. It leaves an empty spot. Next, another enzyme, AP endonucleus, comes in and nicks the DNA backbone right at that empty site. Then, DNA polymerase beta slides in and perfectly fills that single base gap with the correct nucleotide. And finally, DNA ligase 3 comes along and seals up the nick, making the DNA strand good as new. Okay, for your exams, these are the names you have to know. For BER, the key players are a specific DNA glycosylase to find the error. AP endonucleus 1 to cut the backbone, polymerase beta to fill the gap, and ligase 3 to seal it. Four enzymes, four very precise jobs. But what happens when the damage is bigger, like a lot bigger than just one wrong base? Well, for that, the cell pulls out a different tool. This is nucleotide excision repair. If BER was a scalpel, think of NER as more of a patch repair kit. It's designed to cut out and replace an entire chunk of damaged DNA. So, what triggers NCER? It's usually some kind of bulky damage that physically distorts the DNA double helix. The classic example, and you'll definitely see this again, is a thymine dimer. This is what happens when you get too much sun. The UV radiation can cause two thymine bases next to each other to get stuck together. This creates a big, clunky kink in the DNA that literally stops the cell's machinery in its tracks. So the mechanism here is a little more involved. First, a protein complex with a key player called XPC acts like a scout. It scans the DNA looking for these physical bulges. Once it finds one, it calls in two helicases, XPB and XPD, which unwind the DNA around the damage, creating a little bubble. Then the machinery makes two cuts, one on each side of the damage, and removes a whole segment of about 25 to 30 bases. 
Finally, DNA polymerase comes in to fill that much bigger gap and DNA ligase seals the deal. So the key players to remember for NER are the excision endonucleus complex to spot the bulge, and this is a critical difference from BER, helicases to unwind the DNA. That's a step you don't need in BER. And then of course, you have our old friends polymerase and ligase to finish the job. Now this slide, this is your perfect summary for these two. It really boils it down. BER handles the small stuff, single bases that don't distort the helix. NER handles the big, bulky damage that causes major distortion. And it does that by removing a whole patch. It's all about the type of damage. That's what decides which tool the cell uses. Okay, let's move on to our third and final system for today, mismatch repair. This one is different. It's not about fixing damage from the environment. It's the cell's ultimate quality control system for catching mistakes made during DNA replication. Look, DNA polymerase is an amazing enzyme. It's incredibly accurate, but it's not perfect. Every once in a while, it makes a mistake, like putting a C across from an A when it should have been a T. The MMR system's job is to scan the brand new DNA, find these mismatches, and, this is crucial, fix them before the cell divides again. If it doesn't, that mistake becomes a permanent mutation. And here's where things get really, really clever. When you have a mismatch, how does the cell know which of the two bases is the right one and which is the mistake? Well, in bacteria like E. coli, it uses a brilliant little trick, a chemical tag called methylation. The old, original parent strand is covered in these methyl tags, but the brand new daughter strand isn't, not yet anyway. This temporary state is called hemimethylated, and it's the signal. It tells the repair machinery, hey, the unmethylated strand is the new one. That's the one with the potential mistake. Fix that one. It's just genius. So in prokaryotes, this process relies on a team of proteins all starting with mute. First, mute S is the detective. It scans the DNA and clamps onto the mismatch. Then, mute L comes in. It's the coordinator, linking mute S to the next player, mute H. Mute H is the enforcer. It's the one that finds the closest methyl tag on the parent strand, then cuts the new unmethylated strand. From that cut, an exonucleus chews away the DNA all the way past the mistake. Finally, DNA polymerase delta comes in to fill that gap, and ligase seals it up. And just a quick tip for your exams, eukaryotes have a very similar system, but the proteins have different names, like MSH and MLH. That's a classic exam question. So for MMR and prokaryotes, just remember the team. Mute S detects, mute L links, and mute H cuts. It's that SLH complex that gets a job done. And remember that it's DNA polymerized delta that does the synthesis here. All right, we've gone through all three of these incredible pathways. Now let's put it all together on one single high yield slide. This is the one you'll want to screenshot for your last minute revision. Okay, let's lock this in. If there's one thing you take away, it's this. BER is for single bases that don't distort the DNA, and it uses a glycosylase. NER is for big, bulky lesions that do distort the DNA, and it absolutely requires helicases. And MMR is the proofreader for replication mistakes, and its secret weapon, at least in bacteria, is using methylation to tell the old strand from the new one. Knowing these key differences is everything. And that leaves us with one final, pretty heavy thought. We've just seen how amazing and precise these repair systems are. But what happens when the tools themselves, the genes for these repair proteins are broken? Well, the failure of these systems is directly linked to a whole range of genetic diseases and most famously, a hugely increased risk of developing cancer. It's a powerful reminder of just how critical this constant invisible maintenance is for keeping us healthy.